Okay, I just want to do a quick sound check before I get started in a few minutes. Can everybody hear me okay? And actually, let me start sharing my screen. All right, and now shortly you should be able to see some charts. Okay, great. All right, we'll get started in a couple minutes. Okay, also you might notice um, I did I did set up a few handouts. One is the basic day trading plan, one is the um, swing trading plan, and one is the guidelines to use with the work. Um, I do not use MACD as a, as a signal. I mean, that doesn't mean that you can't, but I don't use it. Okay, good. I'm glad those, those came through. I didn't realize I could do that. All right, we'll get started in just about another minute. I do have to have a nice glass of wine first. <laughs> uh, it's been a long, uh, <laughs> it's been a long quarantine. <laughs> and thank God I got back from New York just in time. Um, I don't know, how do you actually get the handouts? Um, does it show somewhere? Okay, on top of the control panel? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, it looks like you just have to click on, you know, the uh, the icon for those documents. And also, I might as well start it this way. If you're looking for, you know, the same information, if you just go to analysts and you choose me as an analyst in the about section, that's where you'll find this PDF. You'll also find a couple of the, you know, the, the videos and also the PDFs, which are the, um, the actual trading plans. Now, these are trading plans that you can just start with and then you can, you know, tweak it to fit your own, you know, goals and trading personality. But that's where you'll find some of that information. Also, as far as, um, let's go back to this here. As far as the videos, if you do not see the videos when I post them, in the evening, let's go back to my name here. And then if you're looking for the FMA videos, they're gonna be right here. Okay, and then also if you're looking for, you know, the other ones, it'll be underneath um, uh, stock waves. So I hope that helps because one of the things that I do is I do one live video each day. Uh, typically it's gonna be a little bit after you know, probably 7.45-ish is, is when I'm going to start. And, and then also I do an end-of-day video, which basically kind of recaps everything that we're looking at and preps you for the next trading day. So that's where you want to go for those. But let's, let's just get started as far as um, I know that there's a lot, a lot of people that don't really know what to do with the charts that I'm posting. So I want to explain that a little bit better. Now, you can start with the the guidelines to the setups and this just you know gives you a little bit of information as far as you know what i'm doing here i'm running three different types of uh, price relationships okay i'm running price retracements price extensions and price projections and then i'm looking for one of three setups so actually, let me see if I can get my arrows here. So it'll be a little bit easier for with a pointer. Come on, Camtasia. Okay, I had a question. How, 
how do you request a symbol for um, for the Monday session? Uh, basically, you can either you know post it in the same place where I um, let you know that I'm doing the uh, stock picking session, or you can wait until you actually get into the session and then you can ask me there. All right. So anyway, let's. Um, I think I'm going to have my arrows here. Well, I thought I was going to have them. Let's see. Record the screen. Here we go. Okay. All right. So there are three different types of setups that I'm looking for every single day. The first one is what I like to call a Fibonacci price cluster, which is the coincidence of at least three Fibonacci price relationships that come together within a relatively tight range. A symmetry setup, that's where I'm using those, you know, measured moves or 100% projections for setups, or a two-step pattern setup. So those are the only three setups that I look for every single day. And I'll tell you, there are probably quite a few days where I don't even see a two-step pattern setup, okay? But I'm always seeing symmetry setups and the price clusters. And of course, price clusters, if they include symmetry, it's a pretty strong decision. So that's what we want to look for. Now, before I go over more of you know, what you're supposed to do with the work, let me also give you the uh, YouTube channel because I do have some uh, videos there that actually explain a little bit about timing factors. And let me just, let's just put it in here somewhere. I'm going to send this to everybody so you should be able to uh, see where that link is. Okay, and that'll take you to, I've got about, let's see, three, six, I probably have about 12 videos. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, um, one of the most recent videos is going to be uh, a trigger example that I did in I believe that was NASDAQ Futures. I did a, um, a full hour video on Fibonacci timing. You might want to check that out. This is actually the Fib time and price that was done about a month ago. This one was done, um, this was pretty much what I did at the New York Traders Expo. That was the same presentation. There is a very short video on timing cycles and what to look for because, you know, I'll put out cycles and people are saying, well, what the heck are you supposed to do with these, these things? And, you know, I do try to explain, you know, if the market's going straight up into cycles, you look for a reversal back down. If we're going straight down into the cycles, you're going to look for a re reversal back up. Um, I did a very short video on the colors that I use as far as my charts. Um, that will tell you that uh, my symmetry projections are always in red. There's a nice um, long video on symmetry. Okay, so I did this uh, presentation before. This is, again, one of the main things that I use every single day. There isn't a day where I don't run symmetry projections. You can actually use symmetry by itself um, to help you trade the market. All right, a few more videos. Um, back here. Now, this is if you wanted to, you know, set up the uh, the tools, the price tools inside of Thinkorswim. And then we have the day trading plan. Okay. Now, this explains more, you know, of the trading plan that you would use if you're shorter term oriented, because you're going to use, you know, either one minute charts, two minute charts, or even tick charts for entries against the zones that I'm setting up for you. And then also here's another uh, video on basically how to use the triggers, not only for day trades, but also for swing trades. So there's plenty of information for you guys to go through. Also, the, the program that I use is called Dynamic Trader. If um, you ever had any interest in that, uh, you'll also see two videos on the tools that I use uh, for that program. So to keep it simple, you know, I'm just going to tell you that all I'm doing is giving you key support and resistance decisions, okay? If support holds, you look to buy against it. If resistance holds, you look to sell against it. And it, it doesn't have to be more difficult than that. Now, obviously, there are other things that you would want to know 
as far as you know maybe um, focusing on what might be the best setup for you personally but it's not anything more than support or resistance so for example in twitter okay i put this out uh what was it um a little over a week ago i actually did a free video on this one this would be considered a setup okay this uh, 24, 74 to 2511 area came in with a coincidence of, let's see, at least two symmetry projections, a 618 retracement of a prior swing, and a 1618 extension of another prior swing. So that is considered a cluster or a key support decision. When a zone is tested and it also holds above it, you know, doesn't blow through it, what you want to do is you want to go down to a lower time frame chart to trigger an entry. Okay, so I want to go through some of these examples so you get a better idea, you know, of what I'm trying to give you during the trading day. So let's go ahead and take a look at Twitter. All right, and that's a five minute chart. Um, okay, so in this case, if you wanted to look at this support for a day trade, your choice is to look at, you know, one minute chart, two minute chart, five minute chart. Um, with this example, I'm going to show you a five minute trigger. Okay. And a trigger is essentially price action that tells you that it's worth placing a bet against a specific zone. So here in this case, okay, here you made that low at the support. It did not go below that area. What I like to see is a moving average crossover, and I use the 834 EMA crossover. That doesn't mean that you cannot use a different set of moving averages, you know, for a crossover. I know that some traders will use the 821, some will use, you know, others. But bottom line, I do use the 834. If you want to use something else, the only thing that I would suggest is that you at least uh, test it to make sure there aren't too many false triggers, you know, if you choose like a, a faster signal type of thing. So in this case, my signal was when you both had the 834 EMA crossover to the upside because we were looking for a buy entry. And we also took out a prior swing high. Okay, you want to see it taken out a prior swing high for a buy because you want to see it shift from a pattern of, you know, lower lows and lower highs to potentially higher highs and higher lows. So that's why my trigger is not only the uh, crossover, but I also like to see the shift in pattern by, you know, well, in a buy mode, taking out a prior swing high, or in a sell mode, taking out a prior swing low. Okay, so there are a number of different ways that you can use this work. You can use it for day trades, or you can use it for quick scalps, or you can use it for swing trades. But if you're going to use it for a swing trade, then what I suggest is that you have to use a higher time frame chart to confirm that you know the support or resistance is any good. So on this first chart, let's say, um, okay, I showed you the five minute trigger. Now to really feel comfortable keeping it overnight, I typically suggest either the 15 minute chart, which is the aggressive swing trade trigger, or the 30 minute chart. Okay, the 15 minute chart will get stopped out more often. Okay, but if you feel very confident about a particular trade, then go ahead and use the 15 minute chart. So let's see, where was the actual low in this case? That was. Um, 2506. All right, let me go back. Okay, so. Okay, so that that was it there. Okay. All right, so here here's that where that low was made at 2506, directly within the price cluster of support. And here is where you had the 834 EMA crossover to the upside. And in the process, you also took out a prior swing high. Okay, so that was basically a buy signal. In Twitter, 
Now this, in this case, it wasn't so graceful because there was a little bit of a gap here, but at that point, when it finally signals, you can define your risk then either underneath the low that's made prior to your buy signal or below the low end of the support, which would have been underneath 2474. So this is basically how you're supposed to use the work. It's just key support and resistance decisions where you use triggers to tell you whether it's worth you know, taking a trade against that zone. Let's look at a couple of other examples here. All right, let's see. Um, I know that we had one. Okay, now I'm not sure if, I, I guess AMD had earnings today. I'm not sure what happened. Um, as far as my work and earnings, you know, it's a total crapshoot if you're gonna go through earnings because I have no idea if it's gonna continue to hold any of my levels or if it's just gonna totally blow through them. So I'm not sure what's what's happened there. I didn't get a chance to look it up, but I can give you an example of, again, a test of support and a trigger that would have told you to enter the trade. All right, so let's look at um, AMD. All right, yeah, because mine does not include the overnight data. So the support actually came in at 51.47. Okay, so the support decision was that 51.47 area. Uh, it's not telling me what the actual low is. Anyway, bottom line is, as long as you hit the support decision, I mean, you have a couple of choices. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just say, well, you know, it's hanging around this support. If it holds, I'm gonna take a buy entry and I'm gonna place the stop right below here. Okay, that's one way you can do it. I typically don't have newbies take trades though without triggers because there are so many zones that the market just blows through. So I prefer that you wait for a signal. In this case, it looks like if we looked at when we tested that support, let's see if we'll have, yeah, right here. Um, in this case, a five minute chart triggered a little bit late. If you wanna look at these zones for a day trade decision, you can start as low as a one minute chart because all you wanna see is something that tells you that the decline into the support decision might be terminating and that, su that support might actually have some value. So if we use the one minute chart, which I can't really show because I don't have enough back data here, I I'm sure you would have had a, a trigger pretty quickly where your initial stop could be right below this 5141 area. And then the potential upside target was gonna be this 6059 area. Okay, so that, but that would be for a day trade. If you're using the very short-term charts for a trigger entry. Now for a swing trade, you're typically gonna wait for something like a you know 15 minute chart. Okay, so it looks like this one may not have triggered. This would trigger a whole lot later, you know, on the 15. But once we both took out a prior swing high and had the moving average crossover, again, you can, you know, take the trade and define your risk underneath the low or underneath the low end of the zone. So in this case, let's see, the actual low was 51.41. So stop could have been underneath 51.41. Uh, in this case, that was actually lower than, you know, where this, um, this support was. So that would be where your stop would be. Now, let's see if I can find a few more examples here. Um, okay, how about Lulu? So the charts that I post every single day, oh, okay, thanks on AMD. Uh, the charts that I post um, every day are typically a daily charts. 
and then also a 30 minute chart. Okay, in this case, this was a daily chart of Lulu. Now, Lulu had a nice new pattern of higher highs and higher lows, so I wanted to set up the pullback. I also wanted to set up the pullback because price was above the 200 simple, it was above the 50 simple moving average, and it was a and the 5 and 13 combo, EMA combo that I use on the daily charts was in a buy mode with the 5 above the 13. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about those, the moving averages that I use on the daily charts versus, you know, the ones that I use on the intraday charts are really only the, um, uh, the 834 EMA crossover. But for the daily charts, I'm using the 200 simple, the 50 simple, and then the 513 EMA combo. And when you have everything on the right side, you definitely want to focus on the buy side. So let's look at an example of, okay, uh, a trigger in this case in Lulu. And one of the things, one of the other uh, guys in the room actually sent me a video of how he uses this work. He basically, you know, chooses the, the markets he wants to look at and the levels, and he puts the levels on his own trigger chart so that he knows when it's testing key support or resistance. That is something that, you know, you could be very helpful to you. Uh, but let's take a look at, okay, where was this last low made? Um, 207, okay, it was that uh, 207.23 area. So let's, let's check the 15 minute chart. So it hit the support and it held above it here and your trigger was when you both took out this prior swing high, basically a pattern shift, and you had the crossover right here. Once both of those things occurred, you know, you can look at an entry. Now, if you wanna really fine tune it, you can wait for a pullback after it initially triggers also. You know, there's always secondary entries that you can look at. But in this case, you know, that would have been your first signal and your stop, would be placed underneath this low or underneath the low end of the zone, okay, whichever makes sense. So again, it's just key support and resistance decisions. And there are times where I'll have multiple price relationships and you might get confused because you'll say, well, you know, where the heck am I supposed to take the trade? Well, you don't know until it tests one of those areas and then also triggers an entry. And I'll have more examples of that on the lower time frame charts. Let's see. Okay, actually we did have, um, okay, so we had a decision, for example, in the gold market today. One of the original setups was where we had time and price at this last low and know that if we continue to hold above this low, the potential upside target is going to be this 1822 area. Now, we haven't met the target, but we have already seen a $97 rally off of a time and price decision. So the way that I look at it is if this low is any good, we should hold on a pullback to it and eventually make the target. So this was today's decision. The original setup was here. And this was just basically a secondary uh, decision to look at with this pullback. Okay, so yes, we held the original zone. Now we're holding the 618 retracement. Now let's say, let me see if I can give you a, or an example of a day trade trigger. Okay, not on the 15. Okay, so basically the low was made, uh, looks like what, 1704? So if you were using, you know, a one minute chart for a day trade and it tested the pullback zone, okay, I mean, some people might just take the trade and place a stop underneath there. But if you're waiting for a signal, here's the 834 EMA crossover and then look to the left and make sure that it's taken out a prior swing high in the process, and it has. Okay, so at that point, you could be long gold, have a stop underneath 
this low and then go from there. I mean, what's happening here is, yes, we did see a nice little bounce from this support. But what we really need to see if it's going to head towards the upside targets is it also needs to clear, you know, these hurdles on the way up. But this was the original setup. And then this was just a secondary entry. And again, it's just support and resistance. All right, let me see. I've got, <clears throat> I have one question here. Um, when do triggers go stale? Well, you know, as long as an area was tested and held and it triggers an entry, it's valid. And the maximum risk could be defined underneath this uh, low or the support, whichever makes sense. You, you know, you can write it up either way in your trading plan. Oh, also, I wanted to, I wanted to show you what else is in those trading plans, because I do want you to look at them. Okay, so here is um, day trading plan. Okay, so basically, you know, you want to identify the setup because that's your definition of risk. And if the chart or if price tests and respects the setup zone, go down to a lower time frame chart to look for a trigger. Okay, and there's, you know, more information about, you know, again, simply the 834 EMA crossover, you know, this one for the buy side, for the sell side, you're looking for a crossover to the downside. I also have some suggestions on the initial stop for a buy setup or a sell setup, exits and targets. And then, um, you know, one of the things that you probably want to do, most people would do, would be trail up stops because, you know, we don't know if we're ever gonna get the, the full target for any of these setups. But we do know that, um, you know, as long as, it, as long as it gave you an entry, it's okay to be in it, but I would trail up a stop just in case we don't make the targets. Okay, so can I explain the meaning of the colors? Yeah, that's also in that video that I showed you on, um, on my YouTube videos. So this is pretty much it. I like to know what's inside of a cluster when I do the work. So any of the basic retracements are just blue. You know, the 50%, the 786. The 618 retracement I always have is pink because, you know, 618 is a very important ratio. And, you know, I want to, to know when that's coming in. I use green for the 1272 extensions because that's typically where you take profits. So green for money, taking profits, 1272 extension, 1618 extension. For the 2618, I just use black. Now for the projections, that's where you're running projections from three points. And you know, if you don't understand like what I'm talking about as far as projections and retracements, the, what you want to do is go back to my original uh, introductory video, and you can also look at the most recent one that I have on um, on YouTube. But as far as the projections or the three-pointed tool, it, it's called alternate price projection. Okay, I use 100%. That's where you have the symmetry, and those are red. So anything, anytime I have symmetry, you'll see a red line. And then for the other one, occasionally I will use 1618. And that, honestly, I can't really even tell if that is kind of a maroon or a brown, but that's what I use for 1618. So I do like to know when, you know, um, like if I have symmetry, because symmetry by itself is very powerful. If you watch the video that I just did on symmetry, you'll, um, you'll understand why I focus on it. I mean, you can have a symmetry projection that could end up being worth 200 points in the NASDAQ. And actually, I'll show you an example of it. Okay, so one of the recent decisions that we had, NASDAQ futures, this is the uh, June contract. 
I always look at the prior declines within the uptrend because many of these swings tend to be similar to the others. And that's why I look for potential you know, support or resistance. So in this case, a prior high to low was 619, 619 points. And then this high to low, I mean, I projected 100% from that last high. That gave us 83.47. It wasn't a perfect hit, but it was close enough. So 83.42 is the actual low. You had a decline of 619 versus 624. Okay, so those swings were very similar. And what I said was that if this is a more important low, the potential upside target comes in at 91.36. But even if you don't get that target, look at how the symmetry held. And there was a rally of 603 points so far from this simple symmetry support that I put out, um, what was it, last week? It hit, it held. Um, let's see, we can look at a trigger. So basically the, the formula to make money is setup plus trigger equals trade entry and then you manage it. All right, so let's look at NQ. Oops, we had a little spike, I guess, in the Okay, not there, but let's look at. Okay, so that was at 83. Okay, so that was here. So let's say, for example, if you waited for a 30 minute chart trigger, it really didn't come in until here. You had the 834 EMA crossover, you know, after testing that support. And you also took out a prior swing high. If you looked at the 15 minute chart, okay, it looks like that would have come in a little bit sooner. So you have the 834 EMA crossover, and then when it also took out a prior swing high, that was your signal to start focusing on the buy side against that last low. All right, let's see if there's. Okay, so let me also show you, you know, when I do the work in the indexes, we're typically using, well, either a one minute chart, for example, or a um, 377 tick chart. I've suggested in the past. So here's ES. Okay, where did we make that last low? 2851. Okay, we don't want, we want a one minute chart to start with. Okay. All right, so this, you know, the one minute chart can sometimes be rather late as far as um, signals, okay? And that's why I typically suggest to take a peek at the tick charts. And the one that I'm typically looking at is going to be a 377 tick chart. And again, you want to see if it tests and holds a support decision because this is where that support was on the chart over here, right? So it tested it, it held, and actually your initial triggers would have been right here. You would have had to take a little bit of heat, but the original support decision was never taken out. And you have seen a nice rally since then, but it's just taking you back into the next, next decision here at um, 2873.74. Okay, so this is an area I did the, I've already done the video and knowing that um, if this low is really any good or more important in the bigger picture, we really need to clear both of these symmetry projections plus this prior swing high. And if we do that, then the odds increase for a continued rally 
from that support. Now, the other option is that if it doesn't clear it, then yes, you can easily fail. Take it from one decision to the next. I mean, this, it doesn't look like much of anything, but let's see, from this low to this high. Okay, so that's 21, 21 S&P points. Nothing huge compared to what, you know, we've been seeing lately. Okay, yeah, on the thinkorswim chart, um, 377 tick. Now, if you want to use something tighter than that, you know, feel free to do so, but just make sure you test it first and make sure there aren't too many false signals. All right, let's see what else we can find. Um, okay, so here, again, so you get a chart from me and you're looking at this and you're going, well, where the hell does she want me to buy? I have no clue. Well, I don't know either because what I'm waiting for is a test and hold of the zone. And if it does hold, I'm gonna go down to a lower time frame chart for trigger. So TLT, let's see, now I want a, okay, so, so 167.33 to 167.49 is support. Again, I'm telling you that I'm just giving you support and resistance. Support that you wanna look for buy triggers against. So since it's held the top zone, you go and that's uh, 167.33 to 167.49. This is where the actual low is made. Where's your trigger? I mean, obviously over here, you know, it's a bearish pattern of lower lows and lower highs. Well, here, after testing support, you took out a prior swing high, okay, but this was a gap. So this was not a graceful entry, but you did take out a prior swing high and you had the moving average crossover. So now you know that the focus, at least, um, you know, against this last low is for higher prices. And as far as taking something overnight, this also triggered on a 15 minute chart with the crossover and you also did take out a prior swing high. So you could be long TLT with a stop underneath this last low. All right, let's see what else. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so as far as, well, as far as the actual tool, are you talking about the tool that I have on, on Dynamic Trader? Because it's going to be different. Yeah, I mean, for me, I only use, as far as price work, I only use these two tools. You've got the retracement ratios, which also give you the extensions because the extensions are essentially ratios beyond 100%. So 1272 and 1618 and 2618, those would be the extensions. But the same tool will also run the retracements because you're coming from two points. So those are the tools that I use on Dynamic Trader. Um, you might want to watch the Dynamic Trader video because it, it shows you the tools that I use and how I, how I use it. Uh, those are within those YouTube videos. Uh, but then as far as the other price relationships, that would be the projections. Now, they call this APP. TOS calls it extensions. Okay, so it's confusing as far as the name of the tool, but I did do a video also on the TOS tools. So you can check that out. That will explain it to you. But this is the one that I use to run symmetry. I'm always running 100% of prior swings. You're always choosing three points to run this. And then occasionally I will use the 1618. So for example, I'll just give you the same chart, but let's run the daily again.
All right, so in this case, I would take the tool that allows three points to be chosen. Okay, so I took this high to this low, projected from this high, and that gave me this as support. As far as the retracements, or you know that other tool, let's see, low to high, retraced, you went through that 50%, but you're still above the 618. And then there is also low to high 1618. Okay, so the top end of the zone is what held. And know that if we hold above this support, your typical target for any trend trade setup is always the 1272 of the swing into the zone, which gives you 173.43 and 175.06. If, if it continues through that, I mean, typically a high percentage of the time you'll get the 1.272. Um, less likely to get the 2.618, okay? But if a market's running, there will definitely be times where you get the third target. And bottom line, once you get up to your initial target, at least get to get up to a break even stop or better. Yeah, DTP is only on dynamic trader. As far as the timing, so let me show you the timing. So what I put out yesterday um, was timing from this last low, okay? So since we were trading higher, I wanted to know when there would be resistance to the rally. So I ran it off of this last low. This is where I run the reports, dynamic time projection. Okay, and then I click on the table and histogram. And then this shows you the actual cycles that are coming in, you know, from the swings that I've chosen. You know, I, I marked the swings I wanted to use. And then you want to look at the standout bars because, you know, and stand out relative to the others, because those are going to be the time windows to look for a change in trend. And if you look over here, okay, where did those come in? Well, the highest scoring dates were 428 through 430. Okay. And I always look at that as plus or minus a day of the cycle. So it really would have been, um, 427 to, um, well, actually 5-1 because there's, we don't have, uh, we only have 30 days in April. Okay, so here, you know, I put that below the chart. If you look at the area of the histogram, okay, it, it shows you visually where you have the time resistance, but also look at the lower left-hand side of the chart. And this tells you what I'm looking for or anticipating. So high means that I'm anticipating a possible high between the 28th, 30th, plus or minus a day. And today the high was made, you know, on the 28th, so directly within that window. And you also had a couple of other things going on. You had 618 of this major swing. 786 of the smaller swing and a 1272 extension, which I was looking for as a target. If you watch my video, I told you that since we cleared that resistance, we were going to look for 2920 as target number one. And the actual high was made at, nope, that's not correct. Let me label this correctly. I was made at 29.21, okay? So again, I'm just giving you support or resistance to trade with. Now, there are other, you know, ways to um, kind of decide what might be better setups for you to take. For example, a counter trend trade is not going to be as high probability as a trend trade setup. So for example, gold, this buy setup, was a trend trade setup, okay? You had a bullish pattern of higher highs and higher lows. 
You had price above the 200 simple, above the 50 simple, and the 5 and 13 were in a buy mode. So that's why we wanted to look at the buy side because the moving averages supported that. Those will be, um, you know, some of the better setups. When you have symmetrical pullbacks, when you have all of the moving averages on, on the side that you're interested in. So in this case, on the buy side. So my preferred scenario is going to be for an extension to the upside. Now, it doesn't mean that it's definitely going to get there, but that's what we shoot for. But so far, I mean, your initial rally was, you know, 97 bucks. Okay, so if you've got the DT software, you know, you get to, um, you're going to work with me on, on Zoom once you're ready. But I would suggest that you watch the, the videos first on, um, on my YouTube channel. Okay, let me see if I have. Okay, when I have multiple support lines, how do you make a decision when to enter? Well, when it triggers. Because we don't know which of the support zones are going to hold. So you monitor each one and say, you know, like if it triggers, you can take a trade. So actually, let me go back to. You know, there might be multiple price relationships on the chart, but you're going to test one at a time. So, for example, this is a this is the chart in Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, I had a you know nice buy setup, you know, back here. However, we needed to clear this hurdle if we're going to push through push through towards the initial upside target. And because you failed to clear it. I mean, you have a choice at that point to just ditch the trade if you're playing it tight. But let's take a look at this or where this came from. Okay, so this prior rally swing, it's $10.76. This rally swing was $10.79. I had projected the low to the high from this low that gave us 176.87 for resistance. Actual high was made at 90, close enough. And you also had a 786 retracement of this swing. Okay, so at that point, you know, you don't have to exit if you don't want to, you know, if you wanted to give it a, a little bit of room. But let's see what that looked like for a shorter term decision. Microsoft. Okay, let me see if I can find a. Okay, so that was at that 176 area. Okay, so 176 ish. Okay, pretty sure that was the high here. Now, once we had the moving average crossover and also took out a prior swing low, that's a sell signal where you could define your risk above this high or above the high end of the zone, which would be above 177.03. Okay, either one is valid. Okay, um, let's see. Apart from the moving averages, what other indicators does it work with? Well, you know what? Um, I used to look at CCI. It kind of worked with CCI. It probably works with, um, I, I don't know, I haven't tried it, MACD. But there, there are a number of different types of indicators that you can use. You don't have to use the crossover if you don't want to. I'm just putting something out for anybody who, you know, might not be familiar with or, you know, use their own types of triggers. So you don't have to use that, but you want to see something that, you know, confirms a decision as, as key. All right. Uh, oh, wait, there's a few more questions down here. Let's see. Wish I could see it. Uh, okay, so this question, how do you project the buy price if you were to take a short? 
Do you mean where you would exit if you took a short? Ah, okay, I just found the, this to get me to the other questions. Okay, so, all right, somebody's asking me questions about both buy and sell setups are possible. Well, you know, on, there are definitely buy and sell setups available on the same chart sometimes. And you have to take it from one decision to the next. So for example, this is the Microsoft, the 30 minute chart. This was a buy decision. Did it rally? Yes, it rallied $10.79. But here was a sell decision. Did it come off of that area? Yes, it did. How much did it decline? Well, let's see, from that high to this low, $7.51. You know, these levels and the zones are your decisions that you can make money against. You could have made money on the buy side against this support, or you could have made money on the sell side against this resistance. Both setups are valid. Now, what I prefer to see is, for example, if, if a daily chart is a bullish chart, you know, here, Microsoft daily chart, higher highs and higher lows, you're above the 200, simple moving average, you're above the 50, the 5 and 13 have been in a buy mode since back here. My preference would be to focus on the buy side because the daily chart is bullish. I'd rather focus on what would be in agreement with that, which would have been this area right here. But that doesn't mean that there are not trades on the flip side, like you saw right here. All right, let's see. When I project... Oh yeah, do I manually look through the charts daily or do you set up notifications based on setups and only look at, no, um, honestly what I'm doing, as soon as the market opens, I go through all of my charts and I update them because there are some where levels have been cleared. There are some where levels would have been blown through. Um, there are new swings that I may have to run price relationships from. So the minute the market opens, that's when I start updating. Okay, when I project price bars, does the number have to be close to the prior bars? Okay, I don't understand that question. Um, this, yeah, this, um, this will be posted, this session. So I've got about another 10 minutes. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know if what I'm telling, showing you makes any sense or not. Okay, so question is, is it correct to say that the buy and sell on the red lines with triggers are good locations for a buy and sell? Well, I love symmetry for trade setups, okay? But if you're looking at, for example, a, um, a bullish chart, so this daily chart, a bull, this is a Facebook daily. Well, on this time frame chart, I'm going to want to focus on the support symmetry, not the sell, because the, the pattern is bullish. So, you know, there's going to be a, a better side to look at, depending on, you know, the chart you're looking at. Okay, so the question is, do I have DTP at the bottom of my chart? Yeah, on, so for example, in the case of S&P, DTP is dynamic time projection. So if I project from the last low, I'm looking in, as far as timing for the next possible high. And this is calculating the cycles for me which showed us that we had time resistance to this rally right here. 
So the program is basically take, measuring all of the swings that I've labeled. So you know this high to high, this low to low, this low to high maybe projected from the low, time retracements of different swings, and it you know puts it all together and spits it out, and then will show us you know time windows where we have to watch for possible failure. Now, if I'm doing um, for a low, uh, let me see if this is where it showed up. So back here, when the market was going straight down, okay, so that was the 23rd report. I'm not sure if it showed up on this time frame or not. Oops. So if we ran it from Friday, okay. So projecting from this last high, the one that is labeled here, projected downwards, when were the time periods to watch for a possible low? Here was the first one, March 22nd, March 23rd. Now, if we had continued to decline, I would have watched this next standout, which came in March 27th through the 29th. But you already made a low on the 23rd. So, you know, that was made directly within that uh, time window there. And since it wasn't pointed down anymore, we just ignored the next set of cycles for a low because then we were pointed higher. Okay, um, Okay. so this is different. So for me, as far as um, I have a question of when, you know, if you guys want me to look at a stock, um, I don't really do the requests like those guys do every day. Okay, and there's a reason for that because I'm looking at about 60 charts. And if I started doing individual charts for everybody, there, you know, there's no way in, in hell that I can do that. It's my other work would suffer. So that's why what I did was, I'm doing the Monday stock picking session. So if you have any requests, you can post them on the site before the Monday stock picking session. But I don't, I don't run uh, requests all day long because of the amount of work that it takes for this. Um, I just do it in the, in the Monday session. So just post it anywhere on the site for the Monday session. But I can't, I can't run different stocks all day long. Okay, so are there any last questions? Because otherwise I'm going to wrap it up. I'm just hoping that you get a better idea of, you know, when I give you something. Um, I just wanted to share that, you know, when I give you multiple decisions. Okay, so say for example, you knew that I had support here, support here, and support here. And you might say, okay, what the hell is she talking about? You know, where am I supposed to buy it? Here, here, or here? Well, again, that's why we use triggers because we tested the high end of support and then we triggered. And you have definition of risk. Now, if it, if it had continued below this area, we would have looked at these areas next as potential support. But it hit and held the top area and it triggered an entry. Okay, um, question, do you need to be a member of the service to watch the video on symmetry? No, you do not. You can watch that, um, YouTube is open. Um, so feel free to watch that. Just, you know, I gave you that link. Hopefully um, you still have that. And then I will be, this is being recorded as far as I can tell. Yeah, it is being recorded, so I will, it's probably gonna take about an hour to render. So after after it gets rendered, I will post it. Um, I'll post it and I'll also send it to Rich. Okay, so any other questions? I'm hoping that this helped as far as um, 
you know, getting a better idea of, you know, how to use the work. It's basically setup plus trigger equals trade entry, and then you manage it. And management just means where are you placing your initial stop and where are you trailing your stop and where do you plan on exiting the trade, whether it's at a target or you're just going to use a trailing stop and let the market take you out. So I hope that helps. And, um, you know, because I'm a little fried after the end of any of these trading days. So um, I'm glad it, if it's at least helped a little bit. All right, well, thanks for joining me. And um, obviously, if you have any questions, you can always uh, post them on the site. All right, thanks, guys and girls. More wine. <laughs>